Welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And today I've got a really special, special guest, Matt Mayo. And Matt Mayo is a, is a lawyer, mm-hmm. yeah, specializing in real estate. Real estate specifically. Yeah, yeah. which is really cool. Because yeah. most of the time I was just saying to Matt, when, when you have to call a lawyer, it's because life sucks. Because, <laughs> you know, somebody's suing you or someone's wronged you mm-hmm. or... You know, sometimes it's for good things. You need a will because, you know, you had a baby or you got yeah. married or that kind of thing. And the other time that's really exciting is when you're buying a piece of property. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a good time to go see a lawyer. And 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 uh, not to jump in on the questions too much, but that's actually, <laughs> that's actually the reason I enjoy real estate uh, for the most part. Because um, you get to see people when they're happy, you know. Ah. You get to see people when they're happy. So you're not dealing with the people that have committed a crime or, or, or no. not committed I'm a crime, sorry, charged, charged with charged. committing a crime. Let me, <laughs> let me rephrase that. Uh, but I mean, you're, you, you hit it right on the head that, that pretty much any time that you're talking to a lawyer, it's because something's you know, gone off the rails. Either um, you're suing somebody and, uh, or, or somebody sued you, you've been charged with a crime. Um, you know, all this, all this stuff that, that no matter what happens, um, even the ideal outcome is unpleasant. Well, you, you go know? through all that stress and For, pain yeah, and costs. Just and to get back to where it should have been in the first place. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, it's, it's a really nice contrast to be able to deal with real estate because uh, you're getting ordinary people uh, dealing with the most expensive thing that they'll ever buy, probably. probably. Um, you know, single investment for sure. And, uh, and, um, they just, you know, they just want to know what's going on, and they want to, they want to get through the process, and and they're usually very happy at the end of it. So, okay, that's nice. Yeah, so that's that's a good thing. You like happy clients. <laughs> yeah. yeah, happy clients. Every yeah. every client has the potential to walk out uh, of the office at the end of the process with a smile on their face. Well, that's great. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's really great. So, speaking of uh, not so smiley, what what kind of difficult circumstances are there to selling a home? And how do you help them with some of those issues that may pop up? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, being a realtor for all those years, you you under you, you've seen that a, a, a thousand times, I'm sure, um, uh, due to deaths in the family and uh, the, the remaining spouse is is old and can't you know t- take care of the property anymore, or um, or is finally um, you know moving into a home, or there's a divorce, or um, you know a loss of a job means they can't afford the property anymore, and that's. That's really, really tough, and mm-hmm. I have to give you guys all the credit for dealing with the vast bulk of the issues that come around with that, um, because usually by the time they're talking to me, the process is right nearing the end, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, and so instead of that, um, you know, all that, the harsh or, or um, uh, sadness and, and anger and, and yeah, disappointment yeah. and all that, seems to have mostly burnt out by that point. So even when they're selling for, for, for um, you know, difficult reasons, by the time they're talking to me, uh, relief is, is a very common uh, thing to come, uh, mm. for them to come in with. And so, um, and then of course, you know, I, I get to see the actual day of completion and, and, and usually the, the, the reaction at that point is, is thanks, thanks for helping us deal with this. So. Yeah, I think most of the time what's happened is there's, there's an emotional attachment to a property mm-hmm. if, if we're talking someone that's selling and needs to sell, whether it be financial or needs to sell because a spouse has, has passed away or, yeah. or whatever. Um, there's an emotional attachment to the house. And by the time we're done with the showings and the offer process and that, they've gone through that grieving process yeah. about the property. you yeah. know. And what I found, I had several clients tell me, you know, initially I thought, all my memories are in the house, <laughs> and then they realize that no, they're taking the memories with, with them. them. The, the stuff. Yeah, that they yeah. Have. The yeah. real important thing is the the memories that are in their head that they're bringing with them. Right. They're not. It's not attached to a physical location. Right. So, th- so that's good. Now, what about other difficult processes like uh, things like there's something on title or yeah. an old. You know, an old mortgage yeah. or, or something, or, or it's still in somebody's name that yeah. doesn't, doesn't live there or maybe doesn't live anymore and it never got yeah. taken off title or something, you know. 
that kind of stuff. You deal with that from time to time as well. Yeah, it's 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 less common. Um, most of the real estate transactions do go through, you know, really quite efficiently. But every once in a while, yeah, you get um, you get the the ones with with stuff that's on title that we weren't expecting. I I had one. <laughs> we were doing the sale on a uh, property up in North Bay, and the um, the property had on it a, a mortgage still registered before they were called mortgages. Um, before I, I, they were called mortgages. Yeah, yeah when they were <laughs> registered on a title, they were actually called something else. And, and for the life of me, I can't, uh, I can't even recall what it was, uh, what it was called again. Um, and, uh, and stuff like that comes up every once in a while. And he was actually there from before our, our selling client owned the property. And it should have been gone when you know it should have been removed when they when they bought it and uh, and it never was so um, you know there's uh, strangeness like that comes up every once in a while but um, luckily the 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 systems that have been put in place by you know by the province and and um, uh, law societies and lawyers and mm-hmm. you know general practices and stuff like that um, tend to deal with this stuff fairly efficiently and so as long as you have the resources and and uh, um, uh, contacts to be able to deal with it. Uh, it's not a matter of if they can sell the property generally. It's a matter of when, and and uh, usually we can get that done for, for closing mm. in any case. Okay, awesome. So you like to meet your people face-to-face? I do. Um, yeah, tell, tell me about your process. So, uh, well, yeah, as far as process goes, um, the very first thing I do with people, the um, uh, very first contact usually is a, is a, uh, a phone call, um, because somebody got referred to the office, and uh, and in that very first phone call, I want to make sure that people are set up. Um, I I think that the common experience for people calling lawyers' office is to have a really brisk uh, phone call with um, somebody who gives them a general idea of of costs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I I because they when they call they they talk to me personally. I I I, um, I don't pass them through an assistant first. Um, I want to give them that full view of um, costs and process right from the start. Mm-hmm. Number one, that sets expectations because that's super important, right? The last thing you want to do with people who are buying a house is surprise them. Um, and uh, and second, giving them uh, a tailored and and really detailed uh, view of their costs um, means that um, coming up, they don't they don't end up with with uh, expenses they weren't expecting. So. You know, I'll, I'll find out uh, who they are, what property they're buying, how much they're buying for, uh, why and where they're buying it, and which lender they're they're using. And, that, mm-hmm. and those those factors all kind of um, come together to um, help us put together a reasonable cost estimate. And that okay. would include, you know, fees, disbursements, land transfer tax, um, adjustments, and then any other costs. Let's say if they were buying with less than twenty percent down. So you're yeah. So you're doing all that upfront. Yeah, and I try to. And, and I do uh, it verbally with them first on the on the phone call. Okay. Yeah. And so one of the things that uh, I've found that buyers sometimes don't realize is that if they're they're using CMHC, <laughs> then there's they'll put the CMHC yeah. fee into the mortgage, but there's something that yeah. they get dinged with that That's why they I don't really know every single yeah. time, right? So the the question after after purchase price and land transfer taxes, do you have twenty percent down? And if the answer is no. Um, we need to know that because they need to know that, right? Uh, if they've got 5% down, uh, they are going to be paying for a CMHC or Genworth uh, mortgage insurance policy. Um, mm-hmm. And that gets added to the mortgage and, you know, taken off of the top. And they're aware of that. And they know that, that, That's right? no problem, yeah. Um, but the PST on that also gets held back. And so that can be seven or $800 that they weren't planning on spending on closing. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's an extra seven or eight hundred, and then there's tax adjustments yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So you you calculate all those, so there's no surprises because exactly. there's nothing worse than have me having a client <laughs> call me and go, yeah. "I'm short three thousand dollars. It was supposed to close yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> what yeah, can I do? Where, where do I get this from? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've loaned the money worst. before. <laughs> I yeah. prefer not to, but you know, because yeah. like, because the worst part is once somebody's made a commitment to buy a home, they're in a legal binding contract. Like yeah. once they've Fulfilled all their conditions and firm up on they firmed financing. it up. Now, if they have That's a it. hiccup, there's ramifications that the seller has yep. opportunity to and bring. Right? You just hope that the seller isn't buying on the same day. 
you know, and and doesn't mind and maybe many pushing of them do. the day. Uh, yeah, many of them do. Yeah. Many Although many it's I, for some reason it seems to be less common than perhaps it used to be. I don't I don't I don't know, but uh, um, I think it, people it are. Happen. I think more and more of my clients. I'm suggesting uh, pay the little bit of admin fees and stuff to have a bridge yeah. financing. Yeah. And get in a week early. Yeah. Or two weeks early, and do your painting, and it gives you time whatever. To get it, move settle. in slowly, yeah. and whatever, and then that way, if if they do have a closing hiccup, they've already got bridge financing, and they're they're yeah, good, and right? and if they have to push that uh, that purchase a day, which is not always not always reliable, you can't always get a, a seller to agree to that anyway. But even if you do, um, you know, you've got that time, exactly. Yeah, I find most sellers, you know, they don't want to have no. the closing delayed. But <laughs> if you can reasonable. assure them that there's a reasonable reason and mm-hmm. that it's going to be fixed the next day, they, they take their lumps. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Okay. So is there a retainer required to hire you um, as, a, as a real estate person? Or what's the standard, the, the industry kind of? Well, that's, that's it's, it's uh, technically a risk, but it's not actually. Um, Real estate closing is almost always complete, right? Um, and so I'm doing a bunch of work before a closing and before I collect on fees, it seems like a bit of a risk because I could put all that work in, it could not close, and I could walk away with nothing. But Sounds like being a real estate agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, because, because the, the, the work is so consistent and the job is so consistent, uh, I, don't, I, I don't take a retainer up front. Um, unless there's really exceptional circumstances, unless there's work that has to be done, uh, even like before you firm up, you know, um, if God forbid, um, a client wants me to write an agreement of purchase and sale for them. And I, (laughs) I try, well, I just, I try to talk them out of that, you know, um, uh, with the whole fiber of my being, uh, because that's, that's not my expertise. And, and, uh, the real estate agents, you guys are, uh, that's, that's your, that's your area. That's what you guys are good on negotiations you can tell them if they're getting a good deal um and and so i i try my absolute hardest to get you know get these guys to to use a realtor instead of me um and uh but it's only in cases like that that would actually you know even consider taking you know a bit of a retainer up front other than that i get paid on closing and uh it's uh it's an insurance to to make sure the job's done right Mm -hmm. yeah great yeah, so you take all the upfront risk. I do. And they reimburse you when it closes. When it closes. Whether it's the seller or the buyer. Both seller are, or buyer. Both, yeah. both are the same. So a seller, it comes out of the sale proceeds, and, and mm-hmm. a buyer, it just becomes part of their closing costs. They bring in their down payment, and then all the, you know, their land transfer tax and all that stuff, and the fees and disbursements all mm-hmm. lumps into one. They deliver it to the office and take our payment on closing. Okay. Yeah. Now, I had a, a an interesting situation the other day. Uh, both... Because we, we sell a property, we actually had both sides of the transaction, which means yep. we were serving the buyer and the seller. Yep. Both of them handed in their, who they wanted to use as a lawyer. That was the same person. Same lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, okay. And then they go, well, you both can't <laughs> use the yeah, same lawyer. <laughs> and one of them was really not happy. And I suppose <laughs> it's always, you know, the first person who called the office. At that point, yeah, I don't know. I don't we were know. called the lawyer's the office, lawyer's office I mean. first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. So yeah. no longer can you work no. for both sides. Really limited circumstances, you can. Uh, most of the time, no. So if you're doing a transaction between family members, mm-hmm. uh, it turns out you actually can do both sides no matter what, which is great. Um, and, and there's a couple other stuff like that. But the definition of, of related parties family members mm-hmm. is really tight like uh, uh um, aunt to aunt to nephew is not going to do it's it. not going to do it yeah. okay well if you're just joining us you're listening to the inside track on real estate and i'm got a guest here is matt mayo and uh matt is a real estate lawyer and we didn't actually tell him how to reach you maybe we should oh, do that is. just uh <laughs> just since we're yeah, at for sure. half time we're doing a little break here sounds good uh so how would they reach you uh, best way to get a hold of me uh, really is is by phone call. I like to, uh, talking to people first, and then we get, can okay. get connected by email. So our phone number at McLean Floyers is uh, 
6774 extension 201 is for me. Um, and um, give us a call um, and we'd be happy to have a chat with you for sure. Mm -hmm. And your office is right down uh, in the Glebe, Glebe, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah bank so. and forth in the Glebe. Okay, so nice and easy to get to? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so give us an idea of uh, costs, fees, disbursement, land transfer tax, yeah. like maybe a typical transaction, although there's no atypical <laughs> transaction. Yeah. And then um, also talk about for first-time home buyers, there's a, there's a rebate right now, yeah. which is, makes it a good time for a first-time home buyer to, to buy. It is. So... Um, uh, fees, disbursements, land transfer tax um, adjustments change for every single property. Um, the typical uh, purchase is going to have the same fee, generally mm -hmm. speaking, um, in our office. Uh, if you uh, buy a condo, you end up spending a bit more on um, the status certificate and the review. Um, uh, but then you end up saving money on things like title insurance and searches, right? Those just cost less for... for uh, okay. For um, condos, and so uh, generally speaking, um, what I end up telling people for the most part for fees and disbursements is to budget for about eighteen hundred bucks, and it's going to come in less than that. You know, generally speaking, again, is that on a lower price property? Uh, that's well, uh, the fees, fees and disbursements. Oh, without yes. the land transfer. Yeah, without land transfer. Okay, absolutely, without land transfer, okay. um, and um, once you get up above five hundred thousand. Um, even the disbursements start to increase because uh, uh, title insurance just costs more at okay. a higher price point. Okay, and is it cheaper to sell than it is to buy? Yeah, absolutely. Cheaper For uh, sale, sales are really, really stable at just around the twelve hundred dollar mark. Okay. Yeah, and that's fees and disbursement ta taxes. Okay. And, and stuff that's like that. that's discharging not not the discharging penalties, a single mortgage. but discharging a single mortgage. Yeah, yeah, like and the so paperwork the paperwork. Yeah, do. the paperwork to do it exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and talk to us about land transfer tax. Fortunately, we're not yeah. like Toronto, oh, parts goodness. of Toronto, where they, yeah, they put that. an extra excise yeah. tax on your land transfer tax. They nearly double it. Yeah. Yes. They nearly it's double like an it. extra ten grand or something. Uh, it, it it goes up, you know, uh, with the purchase price, just like oh, uh, the provincial one. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the uh, the best one that I ever uh, the best worst um, land transfer tax I ever saw was on a $2 million condo in Toronto, and the land transfer tax was $70,000. Ouch. $70,000, uh, Thirty-five, pretty much 35 to each. It's just a little bit different. Okay, for so now that we well. scared the boots off of our <laughs> first-time buyer viewers, uh, let's say a $300,000 townhouse, yep. First time buyers, what's our land transfer tax going to be like? So at 300000 the land transfer um, is slightly over 1% at that point. Um, I believe it's about 3250 okay. But as a first time home buyer, um, you get to uh, chop off 2000 Now, first time home buyers, this is really important, first time home buyers um, can't re qualify as a first time home buyer. Um, after a certain amount of time of not owning a house, as you can with our RSPs. If you've ever owned, uh, or if you've ever held any interest in any property anywhere in the world, um, you're disqualified, you just, you just can't get the yeah, rebate. Anywhere anymore. in the world. Anywhere in the world. So, um, yeah, making sure that, that like, you c can't have uh, held uh, property in trust, uh, or had, uh, had property held in trust for you, rather. Um, you couldn't have been a spouse to somebody who owned property, nothing like that. That all completely disqualifies well, a spouse you. of somebody who owned property, yeah. even if they owned it before you married them? If they owned it before you married them and they sold it before you married them, then you're fine. Oh, okay. Then you can get half of it because the... If the, you're both buying the property. If you're both buying the property. property. Um, but uh, if you were a spouse and your spouse owned property, you had a spousal interest in the property, which means you're disqualified now. So, it's uh, it's it's the province keeps it very tight. And does that include yeah. commercial property or just residential? So there's there there is no land transfer tax rebate on commercial. Um, no, but let's say someone owned a piece of commercial property that was a non-resident. I'm throwing something I'd weird at you. Yeah, that's a curveball. Yeah, that's a curveball. I'd have to do some research on that one. I haven't actually run into that one before. That's a good one. Okay, because yeah. most time people don't buy commercial property before they, before they buy house. a residential yeah. property. Yeah. 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 So, so I'd, have to, yeah, I'd have to look into that. That's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. Okay, so working closely with a realtor, yeah. uh, is that beneficial for your clients? What's that yeah. look like? So I, I, I make a real point of 
um, of working closely with the realtors that end up referring to me because um, uh, there's often there's often questions that need to be answered even before the firming up process and I like being a legal resource for them um, uh, whether or not the client actually comes in and does their transaction at our office is a separate question uh, but it's a way that I can I can provide value to the clients before they uh, actually have a transaction mm -hmm. put in place and provide value to the to the uh, the realtors as well um, I like doing research um, and in fact if I could just get paid to research and provide opinions that's probably what I would do <laughs> <laughs> there's not much money in that though because no, 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 everybody's no, no. got an opinion yeah exactly <laughs> so um, yeah. you know actually um, uh, actually being able to help out in in the beginning part is, yeah. is really quite good. And I know I've called you from time to time because well, nice, yeah. there's some things that just I go, ooh, I need a legal opinion <laughs> on this because yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to put my neck out until I know yeah. a little more information. So, so that's cool. So what do you do to stay current? I know you haven't, I mean, you're pretty, I wouldn't call you green because you <laughs> you know you, you've been doing this for a number of years yeah. and yet you're not an old timer either. No. But what do you do to stay current? And it's super important to keep doing that. Um, the Law Society requires us to um, uh, keep doing con uh, continuing legal education every year, a certain amount of, of uh, credits every year on both substantive um, topics and, uh, and professionalism stuff. So, okay. um, you know, practice management and all that stuff. And so that gets done every year for sure. Um, I, um, I'm currently a member of the County Carleton Law Association Real Estate Lawyers Committee, which is a mouthful. <laughs> That's uh, more than a mouthful. <laughs> um, but um, it, and it was it was a it was a really um, happy coincidence for me that I ended up um, getting on board this uh, this committee. I happened to be in the right place at the right time, met the right mm -hmm. people. And I, I was I was very fortunate to end up with um, access to these people. That uh, I mean, it's it's me and 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 one other uh, solicitor who's got uh, I believe six or seven years in, and everybody else is twenty five and thirty five years in, you know. And so um, being able to use them as well as a resource, you know, in turn, and uh, and keeping myself uh, on on top of the most current trends because on the committee that's what we're dealing with, right? Um, um, updating. Uh, the forms that go between uh, lawyers, um, the vendors closing certificate, mm -hmm. that sort of thing, um, is actually something that's happening right now. But it, it keeps me on top of um, issues that are coming up, um, current right. problems with, uh, uh, you know, the most, most current issues with mortgage frauds or, or things like that. Um, and, and having that exposure has been, has been um, uh, priceless. Okay. Yeah. So you brought up mortgage fraud. Is that something that people are... Uh Subject to lately is it, is it? It's not happening. I mean, it's, it's always it's it's not common. It is the most um, common complaint received by the law society about lawyers is is it has to do with mortgage transactions. Um, mm -hmm. However, it's um, uh, among the general population. It's it's really quite rare, um, and you only really see problems um, where. Um, the most, the most common, the most common instance is if there's uh, a lawyer involved that's not doing things properly. Oh, okay. As well, we don't want to go right? down that road because, uh, yeah. yeah. So get a good lawyer. Yes. yes. And yes. and interesting enough, the uh, the interesting thing with with mortgage or, or identity theft is mm -hmm. where I was more going with identity theft. Uh, your title insurance covers you for that's, that, right? So. And actually, that's one of the one of the protections that title insurance can give you that you can't really get anywhere else, right? You, you generally speaking, you have two options when you're buying a house um, and and getting a mortgage. You either need to buy them title insurance because they're going to insist on it, or you need to um, get what's called a, a solicitor's opinion on title, which uh, involves getting a current survey and surveys cost twenty five to thirty five hundred dollars and so um, getting that uh, um, uh, plus the opinion is is really quite expensive but it also doesn't cover you for things like identity yeah. fraud so titles title, title insurance, insurance is inexpensive well yes. worth the, the couple well bucks. worth the yeah okay yeah. great well thank you very much Matt no problem. give them the number again if they want to reach you and then I'm going to highlight a couple properties we have for sale yeah absolutely so uh, our number is 613-695-6774 my extension is 201 
and uh, you can find us online as well at mcleanslawyers.com. Okay. Well, I've got a couple properties I'd like to highlight. One is in Barhaven. It's a townhome. Uh, three, actually, sorry, it's not a townhome. Mm. It's a single home. There you go. Three hundred thousand dollars. Make a great investment nice. property. Uh, that and it has an ensuite bathroom. You know, great, great starter home. Mm -hmm. uh, then we also have uh, another property out in Canada. Uh, this is one of those kind of stacked apartment, stacked houses, you know, where okay. you go up a flight of stairs, beautiful vaulted ceilings, uh, hardwood floors throughout, and they're actually hardwood floors that are, um, what do they call them? They're, they're designed for people that have environmental sensitivities, so they don't off-gas. Okay. And uh, beautiful property, uh, that's available at two fifty nine, and right in the it's Canada Lakes areas. Uh -huh. So it is a condominium, uh, but two great properties. And I think, you know, this being the season for people really wanting to get out, Just the season. we've been cocooned for <laughs> for quite a while with the cold yeah. and the winter and the snow and all that. And so I'm. I'm finding the phones ringing. We're getting, you know, two, three offers Indeed. a day yeah. now at this point. So, so take your vitamins, Matt. We're going to be sending you some clients. I'll see you. See you on the other <laughs> side for sure. <laughs> yeah. So those are two great properties, and we've got quite a number of properties. We have access to actually every property in the Ottawa and surrounding area, and we can refer you to some great realtors around. Ottawa, you know, whether you're going to Toronto, North Bay, Vancouver, doesn't matter, we can refer. And I noticed you, you guys can do real estate practice, yeah. right? Do closings anywhere uh, in Ontario, anywhere right? Anywhere in Ontario. Yeah, yeah. anywhere yeah. in Ontario. So, so no matter where you're moving to or coming from, we would love to serve you and help you, put you in touch with the right professionals that can help you. And all you got to do is give us a call. We're friendly when you call 613-860-4663. That's 613-860-4663. And if you're a little shy and you don't want to get on the phone, you can email us at info at Decker Team. That's info at DeckerTeam.com. And we'd love to chat with you. We, we just love serving. And yeah, and hopefully it becomes obvious when you see the smile on our face as we help you. All the best, and thanks for tuning in to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker Kids. What you want to do?